The Point of View is brought to you by Cowbell Coffee. Cowbell Coffee. Taste it. Love it. Kel Chaco Toothpaste. Kel Chaco. Happy Smile. Enterprise Life. Enterprise. Your Advantage. Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television. Here on The Point of View, we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. We have a special show for you tonight. We're speaking to the chief executive of one of Ghana's largest organizations involved or intending to get involved in a very important transaction. We're speaking to him to explain what the key issues are when we come back. Stay with us. Enterprise life in your corner. They give solutions that make life easy every day. So now I can focus on my dreams. Miss Moko to Kumi Tibia Enterprise Life will win she share more. I don't know. Yan who do you move? Hey, I shall quit. I shall come wrong. We've got life. Dream big. Go on in big with us. Dream big with us. Enterprise, your advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. So tonight we're talking to the CEO of GMPC, Dr. K.K. Sapong. It's one of Ghana's companies that really deals with exploration, production and development of oil. Dr. K.K. Sapong's organization has written to Parliament to request for certain things to be done. It's generated a lot of interest in the media. Civil society groups have risen, criticizing aspects of the intentions of the GMPC, even before parliament finishes considering it. We'll talk to him about what really is happening in the global oil sector. Is it true that global oil giants are leaving fossil fuels? And for that matter, if we don't start getting involved in production, we'll be running into trouble. And are we paying the right price for the stick in the two oil blocks. Those are some of the key issues we'll be discussing. Dr. K.K. Sapong is our guest. Doc, good evening. Thanks for joining us. Good evening. Bernard, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. GMP is a large organization. How many people do you work with? Just give us a sense of the scale of the task of running GMPC. No, I think um, maybe if you talk out in terms of numbers, numbers normally will not necessarily decide the size of a company. Um, for example, when CocoBot had over 200,000 employees, production wasn't as large as mm. the current scenario where they have just a few thousands, mm. you know, tens of thousands. Um, yes, GMPC employs a number of people, more than 400 people. But in terms of size is the asset base mm. that here matters mm. in the transactions that we deal with. So what well, I agree with you is one of the largest companies in this country. And you're also involved in a lot of things. Give us a sense. So we know obviously you're in oil exploration, but you also have shares in different organizations. How many individual things does a CEO have to manage like in a week? Well I think the focus is uh, oil, oil, oil business. I mean um, Traditionally, exploration, uh, appraisal has been the focus of the GMPC. Um, in recent times, maybe the last 10, 13 years, we've moved into development. We don't do the development ourselves. Um, 
we join hands with we have partners uh, who have invested in these blocks like if we take take uh, jubilee field it's um, cosmos talo petro south africa mm -hmm. um and is leaving for occidental to come in and gmpc so the production aspects or development production is something which has been outside our domain. We represent Ghana, Ghana's interest in these blocks. And um, I mean, we need to clear that impression. Um, we do not do the development as we speak now. It's been done by these partners who are foreigners. And, uh, that's the crux of the matter. Uh, in terms of other interests, we, we, don't do, we don't have much now. Uh, the subsidiary we have the GMPC Foundation, that's an, a natural arm of the sort of things that we do in terms of corporate social responsibility. Uh, our investment in Molly Motel is not anything to write home. What about the mining company? Oh, Pistia Sankofa Gold, yes. We've just brought it back into production mm. after maybe some five, five years of uh, mm. non-production. We just started. At least we are pouring some gold. But these are not core, our mm. core operations. Mm. And, uh, with time, obviously, we, we will be moving out of mm. such uh, ventures mm. as we get a chance now to be doing production ourselves. So if you look at the chain, there's obviously exploration, there's development, and then there's production. Sure. Now, GMPC has a company called Exploco. So just to get a sense, of the three things I've mentioned, what does GMPC do, what does Exploco do, and which aspect do you not touch at all so far? No, no I mean, well, I've mentioned that we, we, we're not engaged in development and production ourselves. We work as partners with these oil companies to get uh, development production going. But in terms of exploration appraiser, yes, we do some exploration appraiser. As I speak now, in what we call the Botean Basin, it's mm -hmm. an entirely GMPC activity, mm -hmm. trying to explore for hydrocarbons onshore. The focus has been offshore, mm. where we are doing production and intense uh, exploration. Yeah, so the onshore one we are doing ourselves. Hopefully, if we drill the first well and we, we strike hydrocarbons, then maybe I can see frantic move from outside is coming. But from a sense I get from uh, our president, Nana Dodankwe Kofuado, uh, he wants the Botian Basin to be a truly Ghanaian focus, uh, rather than local focus, rather than maybe getting international companies coming and we subordinating. We should lead the way for them to come and join us, which is a good strategy. The offshore one is a major issue because of the capital involved and then the technology requirements. Yeah, so that is it. Mm. So we, we, we do this, but we do facilitate what is done by the partners in terms of expressing opinion mm -hmm. on the work done. Yes, we do. Uh, we tend to work hand in hand with them. We second some of our staff to them. And since we represent Ghanaian interests and also our own corporate interests, we do take serious interest in uh, uh, what, what they do. But in terms of making decisions as to who goes there to dig and bring the oil, we are limited at this stage. You, the Minister of Energy wrote to Parliament sometime in July asking that... Um, you'll be allowed to own 37% interest in what is called the Deep Water Tunnel Cave Three Points and 70% stake in South Deep Water Tunnel SWDT and give some reasons. Our understanding is that the major oil companies are leaving fossil fuels and therefore ACA wants to leave anyway and therefore it's advisable for Parliament to help you raise the funding to become more active owners of these two blocks. Is that all there is to it? Well, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a bigger picture. You see, the, the corporation is almost 40 years now 
mm. since uh, its establishment. And we started doing the exploration, bring, encouraging investment into the country, working together with these outside partners to see whether we can find oil and things like that. But after discovery by Cosmos, we move into development where Talu is spearheading it. We've given about 18 licenses in this country, but we have only three producing fills. Talo's Jubilee fill, the Tame fill, and the Sankofa Jigami, which is operated by ENI VTOL. What is happening to the other licenses? No activity. But as I speak now, we've had five discoveries. The two you mentioned, the uh, uh, deep what, water uh, tunnel, Cape Three Points, Cape Three Points, and then which I will refer to as the Ake block. Okay, make uh, it easier. Yes, make it easier. And the other one is the AGM, AGM block. block. These are two of the five discoveries we have. Mm. The other three discoveries, uh, two by E and I, uh, I've got the uh, exact name. There's something called, is it Akuma or something called Afina? But there are two, mm -hmm. E and I block four, uh, two discoveries, uh, which also become, for, become candidates for future development. Mm. Then there's a Springfield uh, block. Mm. Yeah. So these are the, the, the five. The others, some activities are going on, but uh, we haven't had things uh, in it in concrete yet. Mm. Yeah. So uh, if we are looking at anything for immediate development, we should be looking at any of these five. Okay. And I'm sure when we go, go into the details of our decision to go into ACA and the uh, uh, AGM blocks, and maybe things will become clearer mm. to Ghanaians why we have... So let's deal with the Ake block. You, you, you are being offered 37% of the block. Yes. And I'm let me just frame the question. So you are offered 37% of the block. We are told that Hess, who sold the block to Ake, paid around $100 million for the block. And we are buying, if you put the two blocks together, we are buying both around $1.3 billion. So the question is, if the companies are moving out of fossils. That means they want to sell, right? So it's not in their strategic interest to even stay. And they bought something less than four years ago at just 100 million. Aren't we being given the short end of the stick by paying almost eight times the cost of what they bought it when they are under pressure to leave? Well, maybe let me first correct your, your figures. Uh, we are not buying the two blocks for 1.3 billion. We haven't said so. What a minister wrote was that, give me the mandate so I can go mm. and negotiate within these limits. My parliament, after consideration, said, we give you a limit of 1.1 billion for acquisition. Mm -hmm. Even that is not conclusive. Mm. They are now going to see whether maybe they can beat it down, going to see whether the people will play ball. So I think I want us to correct that imp impression that as if a, some price, a price, has been determined. That is not the case. Okay. We are in the process of going to discuss mm. and negotiate and agree the price. I think Parliament in its wisdom has set that as a cap. Mm -hmm. That don't go beyond this. I think they also have researchers, Parliament, there are people there who understand this business. I have uh, two, I would say, former ministers, uh, Amma Kofibua, Honorable Amma Kofibua, former energy minister, Dr. Kamran Donko, former power minister, John Jinapo, former deputy power minister. These, they are knowledgeable, together with the MPP side. So it's not a child's play. It's not something that maybe one would have taken it light. They would have also done their consultation. They would have done their discussion in their caucuses. And then they came back and said, look, 
in principle, we agree with what you want to do. In principle. So there's a concept accept, acceptance first. They accept the con concept. Go out there if you want to buy, mm -hmm. but we don't expect you to go beyond 1.1. I want to commend Parliament for that direction. That gives the minister a threshold not to exceed. So the impression that a price has been determined is erroneous. Now I come to the second point. You are keeping, giving the impression that AK, AGM or whoever, in view of what is happening in the world hydrocarbons economy, are in a hurry to leave. I don't think so. If you look at a time profile set for this, um, what do you call it, um, energy transition, that is the movement from fossil fuels to renewables, we're talking about a 30-year period. From now, the transition they've, they've set 2050. We are in 2021. So we are talking about some 29 years to move, to get to that level. It's a long way out there. But what is going to happen over time is that they will gradually withdraw from the production of fossil fuels, that's hydrocarbons, um, our oil and gas, crude oil and gas, and move into renewables. So you then will see that over time, there will be movement of investments in, into the extraction or production of uh, uh, fossil fuels and shift capital into renewables. As they tell us not to, also the message to us that those of you emerging countries, producing countries, you've just discovered oil. It's fine. But we don't want you to produce our oil. Leave it in the soil. And I think there's hypocrisy there. Hypocrisy in the sense that they've had over 100 years to extract oil. Oil production in Venezuela is about 100 years now. So over the years, they've taken their oil out. And indeed, if you look at the West, Britain, Germany, US, Canada, I'm even watching Canada, whether they leave their massive discoveries in the soil. They have extracted oil in their own backyard and in our fields to develop their countries. Now they say, oh, you just leave it there. I, I think that is something that as, uh, as somebody from a developing country, I find it difficult to accept. You see, and it's this realization this kind of position which dawned on me, which really necessitated my push for this agenda. You see, the other thing that, so what I'm trying to say that within the, this time frame, production should be going now. And if they shift investment from us, it means we cannot develop our fields. And our oil will remain in the so soil. So are you saying that if they decide, because don't forget, we, they have not developed. They've just explored. They haven't done proper development. Neither have they produced. If, based on their strategy to leave, and the fact that some of their colleagues like ExxonMobil and Shell have not even done any drilling, if, if we leave things at the steady state and they say, we're not going to put any money into this, and we say, well, you bought it for 100 million, we don't have more than 300 million to give to you. So what will you do? Assuming you decide to say, look, this, this, this belongs to us. You are not developing it based on the time frame. You didn't give, in, you didn't give us a, a proper plan of development. So if you are not going to invest money into this, it reverts back to us. Will that, will, will that be a simplistic argument or you still have to pay? Because the concern is that these guys don't seem interested in investing in the thing. No, you are saying that they are not interested. I mean, I, I, I disagree with you. I'm the one working with them. Is the COVID which slowed down the process. We were working towards submission of plan of development. Well, they were working towards their final investment decision. 
So what are we talking about? They never, they haven't said they are not interested. You see, that is too simplistic. That's an assumption that is not, has no basis. But they've not submitted a POD. No, but if you were the one doing this business when COVID struck, I think you take a step back. Not only the many companies decided to slow down. I sold, or GMPC sold one, a barrel of crude oil for about $11 during that period. And I know one trip, we, GMPC made only under, under one, one million dollars in terms of our share. So, I mean, you see, we, we, we are looking at the issue as if nothing happened. Something happened. So would, that, you, would, you wait for, would you wait for the POD before you enter the negotiations when Parliament gives you the, the go-ahead? I, I, I don't need to. You see, because we are, we are truncating that process. Why? Because I want to join them and become a operator. So I'm truncating the process. Let me come back to the issue. No, just stay there, please, for me. If somebody is offering you part of a block, and again, this is basic, and he hasn't given you a plan of development, he's just explored. Don't, don't you think the plan of development will give you greater insight into the value of what is there? So that if we're even going to negotiate price, we'll say that in addition to all the work they've done, this is their plan of development. Therefore, we feel that even if we give them 400, 500, or 600 million, this is the right price. So some feel that the lack of a POD in itself doesn't give us enough insight into their or they are real intentions for those blocks. You see, uh, well, we are only doing a hypothetical analysis. That's the way I see it. People are setting their own questions and providing answers. The reality on the ground, I, GMPC, is working on them. With them, we have been working with them over the last two, three years. We had initial POD submitted. The process of POD formulation and approval is a bit long. It will come back, we'll give our comments, mm. we want to revise it. In that process then COVID hit. And when COVID hit, it then became obvious that the strategy which would have informed the POD that they were developed needed to be revised. Okay. And even that, we have been working with them on the strategy. So nobody can tell us that we do not have insight into what is in that block. POD doesn't determine valuation. It only helps make things clearer for you to be able to know which direction you want to go. That is your plan of what? Development. You can do valuation without necessarily having a plan of development. Once appraisal is done, once discovery is made. So please don't let us be simplistic there. How do we ascertain how much they've spent since they took over, independently? Oh, that's not difficult at all. We have what we call the license cost, which goes into exploration, appraisal, development, and production. It's a process. At this stage that we've done exploration and appraisal, we've drilled wells. And therefore, we've done appraisal. The actual cost of these transactions are known. Mm -hmm. And for the two blocks, they spent 399 million, point, point 0.2 million, 399.2 million, almost 400 million. Mm -hmm. People, you see, you are not in P GMPC. You don't have the figures. You won't come and ask. And then you jump into a conclusion that they haven't done anything there. How did they, they drill wells, they made discoveries, mm -hmm. it didn't come in a vacuum, they worked. And these costs, the three nine nine point two million dollars I've told you, can be verified because we certify before it is paid. And I have a guy in my office, I mentioned his name in radio today, uh, Kobenampofo, Anthony Kobenampofo, who is the manager for project finance, he will give you these figures. But apart from that, as mm -hmm. a company, they have establishment cost. They will give us these figures. Companies pay interest charges, 
on their loans. They pay other costs like establishment costs, accommodation, all those things are paid. These costs, they have done some cost there as well. They have incurred some cost there. Mm. The, the, reason I'm pres- verify. the reason I'm pressing this is that one of the, the people who've questioned, Dr. Theo Champon, says the reserves and the resources have to be independently valued. And he gives an example. He says the standard industry practice is that reserve evaluators such as Gaffney, Klein, and Associates, De Goya, and McNaughton, and Ryder Scott independently, that's my emphasis, evaluate such reserves and contingent resources, which serves as an input into the cash flow models and evaluation, and eventual evaluation. So you've said you have certified as GMPC. No, no, no. So to the wait, extent please, that is a public please. discourse. He is talking about valuation. Yes. You are talking about historical cost. Let me show you the difference. Historical cost is actual cost in Kate. Valuation is an estimation of the worth of the resources. No, I'm talking yes. about valuation of the resources. Yes, but then you are confusing that with the no. historical cost. No, I'm reading specifically from his article. This is his first question. He says, I'm, this, this I've not even my words. He says, were the reserves and resources in both DWTC, stroke CTP, and SWTT blocks independently certified in line with, for example, the Society for Petroleum Engineers Petroleum Resource Management System. In other words, at what point was an independent valuation of the oil and gas reserves and resources in both the, the two blocks conducted before the commencement of negotiations? And then he goes on to list what I said. Okay, then let me come in. Mm-hmm. Why would Dr. Champon assume that that hasn't been done? Because that's he, has, a, he hasn't fact. seen it. Yes. And it's not in the public domain. But has he asked? But GMP is a public company. No, no, no. It, please. We have confidential information we keep. We don't just put everything out there. You ask and I give to you. So is it available? It is available. Why, how would I go to cabinet or go to parliament and tell them this is the valuation? Will I, am I crazy? Am I conjoined? No, no, because it was not attached. What the, the, the parliamentary memorandum no, no, no. we saw, there was no Listen, attachment to it. We don't need to. We only need to make reference to who did it. If you want to examine the document, we give it to you. I mean, please, corporations don't work like we are not in Makola where maybe are you a state the things. Enterprise? It doesn't mean I put everything on. It's not a word that I put on the table. Who says that I did? Va- I didn't do valuation. How would I go to cabinet and tell them this is the value? He's talking about independent. He's not saying he didn't value. You've already said that. He's I know who said it. I didn't take independent. I'm not a kid. But we I know. We don't I know. know. Please say you don't know and let me tell you it is there. Don't jump into conclusion. So, so who did the valuation? Independent. Who was Lambert independent? Energy Advisory did independent valuation. Even before then, Ake AGM had con- commissioned two other valuation. We said they commissioned. We went for Lambert mm-hmm. and we jointly commissioned Lambert. You see, it's, it's a very serious decision to be made. I cannot just take things for granted. And therefore, we went through due process. This is the Lambert valuation is there, mm-hmm. Parito Securities valuation is there, Arctic Securities uh, valuation is there. And in fact, even if he cared to know, uh, I expect uh, Dr. Chambo is a researcher, a PhD holder should be a researcher. If he cared to know, you could have even assessed other valuation results. Would Mac- Mackenzie had done evaluation, not solicited? Yeah, Blasted Energy. Is it Blastard or whatever? They've done evaluation, which was unsolicited. Even the celebrated Bamel, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, they have some, some report on Akers blog. These are all there. So you see, if you are doing an academic, intellectual work. He, he was asking questions. He didn't, he, I'm really, he, do you need to ask those yeah, questions? Because it's a public as discussion. If, no, no, as if. He you hasn't think, jumped to a conclusion. As you think we are novices, we don't know what no, we are but, doing. No, but that is a conclusion. That's what he's trying to say. No, I, I think that, for, I mean, he's not an, in, on trial. This was a publicly posted document. The questions he's asking are in the public domain. Okay, now he should come. He should bring his questions list. I, KK Sapon, will be available to deal with each question. I will be able to deal with each question. See, when uh, this whole conversation started, you know, people have made all wild comments. My style is not to respond. 
to rabble rousers. I don't do that. I have better things to do. So I allow them to talk. That is now I have allowed this interview. So are, are you, you saying that civil society's approach to this process has not been the right way? Because not all of them. Some of them have spoken to us. You know, they are divided. I saw a leaked video and I, it was a mockery. Divided. You are hired by people to just destroy what we want to do. But the well discerning ones among them have been to us. And I was joking today about, as a student of ministry, I quoted Matthew 7 7. I say, the good book tells you, ask, seek, and you find, knock, and it will be open. You are not doing it. And mm. then you just draw, set your own questions and provide your own answers. It's very unfair to professionals like us. How would you expect me, with my background, experience, to go to cabinet and say that this transaction should be done? And I say, oh, magically, this is my value. Even if I did, I did GMPC internal. But, but say, I think to be to, to great respect, even if there was evaluation independently done, mm -hmm. there were people on the evaluation call. The Lambert guy gave the amount he used in his projection calculation, for example. Yeah. Now, the fact that evaluation has been done does not mean people should accept the figure he used. They can question his assumptions. No, but you are saying that it wasn't done at all. No, we've moved beyond that. <laughs> we are, we are on a different issue. Oh, yes. So we are on a different issue. Yeah, but, but if we bring 50 experts and say they should value the two blocks, I'll be surprised if we get two of them giving you the same figure. But Unless their assumptions are the same. But the question is, are we satisfied as a country with the valuation Lambert did? Well... If you, if you are not, that is what, Lambert is the organization I engage. You can go and engage Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Somebody can uh, go and engage HSBC or whichever company. They are all, they are all going to give us valuations. But the question would then will be, what are the assumptions underlying these valuations? Are they reasonable assumptions? Can we live with them? These valuations are all guides to help us to make informed decisions as to what the acquisition price will be. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll deal with that. This is the point of view. We're trying to understand the GMPC's mind in relation to this proposed transaction where Ghana will get 37% of one block and 70% of another block. So society sections have not been happy with this. The GMPC board says they should have asked because the answers are there. Well, we have some questions. Now that he's speaking, we hope to get answers to all of them. Stay with us. Nothing wakes me up better than a cup of cowbell coffee. Delicious coffee aroma. Mmm. How can you forget your lines again? I'm sorry, sir, just that it tastes really good. Cowbell coffee! Enjoy the delicious creamy coffee taste of three in one cowbell coffee. It's a beautiful day. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. From weekend warrior to workhorse, when you get behind the wheel of the new MGZS, the luxurious sedan experience meets the rugged frontier spirit of the SUV. Indulgently generous interiors. Hill Start Assist System for unwanted uphill traffic and the touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay for easy mobile phone. Designed for the driven. Life is too short, I know if you waste time. Where they are 
up at this why on a day sleep make you wait a mo Who they call me if you know me party call me later oh. If your girlfriend no go go call your side take it makes the link up go eh. As I'm on a Samantha buffet and I will go check it Fine fine Good day energy drink Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back to the point of view. Tonight we're talking to Dr. KK Sapo, he's the CEO of GMPC, about our intentions to get significant stakes in two key blocks: the ICA block, 37%, and the AGM block, 70%. The AGM block, a couple of questions on the AGM block. So some people are baffled that only two years ago, um, it, it appeared, in fact, let me, let me deal with the AGM block. It appeared that um, the one of your partners wanted us to reduce Explorco's interest in the SWDT to zero. They, they, they felt as if they wanted more. And then 2021, now they are offering. So they feel that the two people we are dealing with, um, ACA and AGM, they are, their turnaround appears too quick that we should question their motive for all of a sudden wanting to offer something that two years ago they wanted more of to us. What's your comment on that? You see, there's also some correction to be made there. AGM Eka did not come to KK Sapon. It's me as chief executive of GMPC assessing the energy transition who went to suggest to them. How about partnering with you so that we become an operator? How about taking a major stake? But before I address the rationale for that move, let me say that the S local share of 24% in ICA was traded for 5% um, carried what interest. That was a commercial interest, and it meant that they won you needed to contribute to the, all the activities. If you had 24% and you traded for carried interest of 5%, someone you say that, well, you lost about 19%. But that would be an, a simplistic calculation. You didn't lose 19%. You would have paid for everything up to date. ECA has spent a certain figure since uh, this process started, and, uh, let me try and get you the figure. Which, because between the two of them, they spent 399 on license cost. I think I can get the acre figure, what they have spent. And that would mean Esploco should have paid a certain portion of that figure. Just permit me, just give mm. me a minute. I'm sure I can. But what you are looking for, you, you are saying that you went to them, they didn't offer you the shares? No. You see, that, that is... But, but because we thought the impression in the memo we read, again, in the analysis, you said the problem was that because of all that's happening, yeah. they are not prepared to develop. You see, I am living with them. Mm -hmm. I can see your posture. They won't run away. They've discovered covered massive resources there. They won't run away. Even if they want to slip, flip, they want to find somebody to sell to. And... With energy transition and whatever is happening, it's quite obvious that even if they are going to help you develop, they are going to develop, they will do it at a slower pace. And then the structure we have there now, we have no part to play as, play as an operator. That is a fact. You can't do anything about that. So the suggestion, it was our approach. It's me having discussion and say, well, uh, this agenda of becoming... An operator, he's been on the cards for so many years. I don't see any movement. Would well, they have found anybody to sell to? Well, it, the, you know, the, the question you should ask is, were they going to sell? No, because you see, the Economist has an interesting write-up on this, and whilst we are getting the document, they, they have a, 
this is just the, the second week of August. It's quite an interesting story. They are basically given the background you gave that, yes, ExxonMobil, Shell, the China, nobody is really investing in fossils. Yeah. But then they say, because of this, the government plans to step in and buy back the oil fields nobody else wants. Well, that that's that's the, the sentence they, they quoted. The, what, the, what they're saying is not the gospel truth. Who, who says nobody wants to buy? If somebody, no, nobody has a problem. We have made a move that because we want to be an operator, we want a major stake. If you don't have a stake, how do you become an operator? I understand that, but yes. are you sure that there was somebody else wanting this block? I'm not sure. I'm not so sure. if they conclude that nobody else wants it, we have to well, believe uh, well, them. Well, well, you have to be where is the basis where is because the they've said that based on the events of exxon mobil because these are the major global players yes. all of them are not interested yeah but but they are not all of them are not interested because all of them want to move to a new direction so nobody wants to buy no is why well, but exxon itself is left the one that was given to them yes yes that's B, the, so B, that's the point. bp made a pitch here and yeah. they didn't they didn't land they decided to go but you need to be able to understand what these companies have Because there's doing. even, we have Talo, Cosmos, even the Chinese. So the, the argument again is that if it was that lucrative, we would have seen at least some interest from elsewhere apart from us. Well, if that, is, that would be Ake's own confidential information. If people are making overtures to them, it is, we will get to know only when they have made a decision to accept any offer from anybody but that by law they are supposed to seek our consent there must be a farming partner you understand so if they haven't given you that uh, information you cannot say that nobody has uh, but in our own market them. intelligence basic our basic economics if there's a something being sold the more there is demand for it the higher the price goes the, 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 so, so essentially, you see, in, I'm, I'm, I, 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 you've explained strategically what you want to do. I can't agree with you on that. Yeah. I'm just saying that now that there are issues about pricing and we are talking about whether these people were in a hurry to leave or not, and you are saying to me that, no, you strategically said, I can see where you are going. It's not going to help my country, so I want it. Yeah. That's fair enough. Some people say, that's okay, but they are in, they are in difficult situation. So they are giving information that if you push them, they may even give it at a lower price than is being contemplated by parliament. Well, <laughs> you see, it's somebody's conjecture. How do I know? Is it the truth? Is but there any evidence? Please, you see, let us... But they say they are in difficulty. Have they shown to us they are in difficulty? We're working. We have been working, even during the COVID time. That's when we changed strategy from a bigger FPSO to smaller FPSOs. This is a technical job that has been done by GNPC and them, and Luke Oil. You see, so if you say that they are in difficulty, well, maybe it's true, but I'm not aware. Let's go back to the 24%. I want to clarify a point about the, uh, the interest and how we, uh, we, they, they wanted to reduce Explorco's paid interest to zero. You, want it, you are looking for some clarification. Are you okay? Can we move on? You can move on. All right. So let's deal with the issues around, so what are the next steps? Okay. So Parliament has given some upper threshold, but they are basically allowing you to start talking to them. Is there some timeline? What's going to happen? Give, give us a sense of what's going to happen next, between now and whenever. Well, I think we... we we are looking at what will be the form of the agreement, what will be the kind of structure we want to put in place. These are all in discussion now. We are working, uh, but the trigger point will be agreement on the price. The f finance minister and the minister for energy have been tasked by government and parliament to see to this process. You might have heard that finance wants some further evaluation. Uh, for us, that's fine. Because we also rejected even the uh, evaluation done by ACA, AGM, because uh, unfortunately when I went for the evaluation that I wanted, it was higher than what they had commissioned. So that is uh, the kind of uh, situation. We may go and maybe come with a lower figure. If all of us agree that that is the way to go, that becomes a starting point. 
but the ministers will have to go and agree the acquisition price. We are working on what the form of agreements could be, which may be subject to further approvals by powers that may be. And once that is done, because obviously if we come in as an operator, if we are changing the physicals, it will mean that we have to get in the, a new uh, uh, petroleum agreement approved by parliament. So it's not a, a simple process. Mm. We're going to go through a whole elaborate process, very transparent process, whatever we go and negotiate, whatever terms will come, whatever revisions to agreement will come, we have to take it to parliament for, for their consent. There are a couple of concerns about the young chrome aspect of one of the fields where people feel that there hasn't been enough, um, there, in, there's not enough proof that it will be lucrative. And they are suggesting that, for example, if GMPC wants to be an operator, you should also be exploring prospects like Cosmos's Wawa and Akasa and uh, another one they call the Erin Energy's Expanded Shallow Water Tunnel. Are these things some uh, things you are considering? Did this come into the picture when you were thinking of making GMPC an operator? Well, I'll say no, because I, I said I'm looking at the five discoveries. In fact, at the time we were looking, there were four discoveries, mm -hmm. not even five. The uh, recent one from E and I, uh, the second one from came recently. So we had four to look at. So we're looking at the four candidates to see which one was. Erin was not part of my problem at all. I've seen some figures being touted around, 500 million barrels there. That's not true. See, don't let us confuse our country, men and women. We don't have to. It's never true. If Erin had 500 million barrels sitting there, then maybe my question is that why have others not approached them that they want to come and even buy? It's not true. Our estimations are some 40, 50 million barrels, mm. which may not be commercially viable from a development uh, perspective. You see, so, you know, these things must be uh, studied carefully. And in fact, talking about this whole process is that drive towards operatorship, which we need to have a suitable ally. It's not just anybody. It's not just anybody. A willing ally, a suitable ally, one tested. You see, the, the Ghanaian basin is all more of, apart from salt pond of oil, offshore oil, which was shallow, very, very shallow waters. We are talking with deep water. So if I want to learn deep water, I want to drive articulator. Why should I go and be driving a motor bicycle? We'll take a break on that point whilst we reflect on articulated motorbike bicycle. This is still the point of view. When we come back, we have a few quick points on the GMPC before we wrap up. Stay with us. Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Cal Charcoal Toothpaste, healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Charcoal toothpaste. Sankofa. Yenchi. Kill charcoal toothpaste. Happy smile. I see. And you'll be honest, I was all for it. Why is that? Life is too short, I know if you waste time. When they up at this wire, not they sleep, make you a tambo. 
Who they call me if you know me party, call me later. Oh. If your girlfriend no go go, call your side chick, it makes the link up. Oh. Eh. As I'm on a Samanti buffet, and I will cook your cake. Fine, fine, Good day, Energy Drake. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years. Lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. Bonjour, monsieur. Madame. Et voilà. Ah, babe. What is this? This is the escargot. And the foie gras. Oui. Where did she go? You pa one casa un who say obase or pay fear the end. Eh? It's been long since you ever felt like this. Welcome to the best in Ghanaian entertainment on Aquaba Magic. Welcome home to Aquaba Magic on DSTV Channel 150. It's your moment. DSTV. Welcome back to The Point of View. We've been talking to Dr. K.K. Sapon, who's the CEO of GMPC, trying to understand the reasons why we are getting those two shares in those two key blocks, the idea of moving away from fossil fuels and what that means. Let me ask you a general policy question. If the major oil giants are leaving fossil fuels and countries like Ghana with not that significant compared to, say, Nigeria or the Middle East are now trying to develop and produce, are we not betting on the wrong um, fuel type for the future? In the sense that clearly people are moving to electronic cars, the, the money that's going to come to support this type of fossil fuel, you are saying global is going. Haven't you waited too late? Isn't it? Is, hasn't the horse bolted? Uh, I don't think so. You see, the, the energy transition thing should not be looked at in terms of a one a one, two years sort of thing. They've defined a period. You have another 20, 29, 30 years to travel. All that we are trying to do is that within this period, we want to take as much of our oil as possible. And at any rate, if we produce the oil locally and we don't even export, we will still have our petrol and gas oil cars to, to run. They will run on the petrol. Many of our industries will still need these uh, liquid fuels to, 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 to use. But will there be money globally to invest? Because once the big companies start signaling their exit, finance also moves. Well, not necessarily. That's why we want to land quickly. If we do one, one or two developments and have some reasonable flows coming, you'll keep on generating money. And then from there, you can do your own this thing without relying so much on uh, extensive, massive foreign capital. Jubilee 10 and Sankofa production has reduced. 2019, it was around 200K. It's now around 154. It's projected to come down to 80. So in the medium term, while this deal gets through, should we lower our expectations on oil revenues as a country? Um, I would say no, we shouldn't. That is why we want to do this project, so that we can add on, we can, we can recover the lost ground. You see, um, if we don't do anything, it will continue to decline. And if they decide not to be putting in money, maybe after 10 years or whatever, it may be too late for us. So if it's possible for us to add on, then we produce an add on so that we don't lower our expectation of revenue. Rather, we should have a heightened expectation. So when is the earliest you can do this, if all goes well? We want to see oil by end of 2024. And this will be both blocks? No, no, no. You see, we have a strategy. We have Pekin on the Acre block. There are two main discoveries. Pekan, 
north and I think Pekan south. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're dealing with north, we divided that into two phases, phase one, phase two. Mm -hmm. We focus on that first. Nyankom is later. Mm -hmm. And then we come to phase two. If the economy is really very good for us, why not? So it's a graduated process. We intend that in 10 years, if all goes well and we are developing, we may be able to add about 200,000 barrels to, to Ghana's production. So if by that time we had a decline in production, then this will come and fill in and perhaps go up a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Keke Sapon is the CEO of GMPC. He's been speaking to us on government's intention of GMPC's request to parliament and obviously our intention to secure more shares, commercial interests in two key oil blocks. We already have carried interest, as we know. He's promised to update us from Matthew 77. So if more questions come, we hope to get <laughs> uh, audience to ask them as the transaction develops. Thank you, Doc. We'll be with you next time. The Business Dashboard is next. Bye-bye. The Point of View is brought to you by Cowbell Coffee. Cowbell Coffee. Taste it. Love it. Kel Choco Toothpaste. Kel Choco. Happy Smile. Enterprise Life. Enterprise, your advantage.